The hoof trimmer is here right now. Uh, he brings his own chute out here and he comes out once every six months. He does the entire milk herd and the older corrals, the dry cows and some bread heifers and those sorts of things. And we're gonna go have a look. He's in the barn right now. He already did the east side of the barn yesterday and a little bit of this morning and now he moved over to the west side. So this is the hoof trim chute here. Uh, it just lifts up and down so he can get the cow on the side and get at the hooves. He's also got some hoof clamps on there. It just kind of clamps their legs so that he can work on it without them kicking. This whole chute he just tows behind his truck. It's actually like a trailer and he can put some gates on there. It's pretty sweet. It's all run on hydraulics so he's just got a little remote and he lifts the cow up, lets her out, everything's run on hydraulics. So they brought their own gates to kind of make a chute to run the cows up into it. They just hold a couple back here, 10 or so, and then they'll slowly feed them through. He's just mostly checking the shape of the hooves and making sure they're the right length and all that kind of stuff. He's also looking for a few sores. If the cow's hooves have hairy hillwort or anything like that, he's gonna treat that right away as well. So this is the remote he uses to control the chute. I guess he just clicks a button and lifts the cow up. It's pretty convenient. Every six months, the hoof trimmer coming out is kind of like maintenance. Cows' hooves, they grow, they get longer. And if you keep up on it, they're gonna be a lot more comfy and they're gonna eat a lot more food and make more milk. And that's why it's so important to stay on top of keeping these hooves trimmed. What are you doing, girl? And that's why we get them out every six months. So they're a little bit scared to walk up to that chute, but it is pretty loud with that hoof trimmer there. And once they're in there, they're pretty calm. So this screen right here, they can record the cow's number and what they did to her. So she's got hairy heel wart on both her hooves here. So they just entered it in. And then we can go later on and check and see which cows had it. So they're parked right where we load the cows into the holding area. So we let them go a little bit longer. We are gonna start milking a little bit later today. So I'm just gonna grab the skid steer, park it there ready to go, cause that's how we're gonna move that chute out of there. And then we can get this East group into the holding area so we can start milking cows. Usually 2X milking on a dairy farm, we wanna stick to 12 hours and 12 hours. So we'll start at four in the morning and four in the afternoon. We're a little bit off. We usually do 13 and 11 hours just because then you can start a little bit earlier in the afternoon, be done a little bit earlier at night and still have some time to do stuff uh, like go have dinner or something. Otherwise, you'll be in the bar until 8 or 9 o'clock at night every single time. But now we push it back till about 4.15. We're going to start milking in the afternoon where usually we'll start at about 3.30 or something. 
So I'm gonna grab the skids here, get it ready so we can pull that chute out of there and load the cows in because we're already a little bit later. So to pull it out of the barn there, we just got the pallet forks here. We moved the two forks really close to each other and then we got this attachment we slide over. It's got a little pin that we can hook up to the hitch of that trailer for the hoof trim chute. in that barn with this thing and the skid steer. We got this hoof trim chute pulled out of the barn. We just parked beside our generator shed here. They need a plug-in to charge the batteries. All the hydraulics on this thing are run on batteries. So you got an extension cord plugged into the side of this building and they just leave it here to charge overnight. And that way the next day when they come back tomorrow morning, it's gonna be ready, charged up, and then they can go the whole day. They do charge the batteries over the course of the day, I'm pretty sure. So this is the main cow barn. It's tunnel ventilated. That's why there's so many big panels that open up at the front here. If we walk in here, all the way at the back of the barn there, there's 10 exhaust fans and that's supposed to pull all the air straight through the, right to the back of the barn. So we're just testing out the tunnel ventilation in the barn here. You can see more towards the middle, the air shoots right down the end of the barn. But on the walls there, it's pretty stagnant. Even in some spots, it's blowing back that way. And that's definitely not the way these tunnel vent barns are supposed to be working. Uh, it should be an even flow of air across the entire barn so that the cows can stay nice and cool, so that there's fresh air for every single cow, not just the ones that are eating. We use that little fog gun there along that wall the air is pretty stagnant doesn't really move at all along that wall moves pretty good and a lot of air gets sucked down into where the parlor is there and the two straw packs just because there's some exhaust fans back there and this is where it draws its air from and that could be influencing the way the tunnel ventilation in this barn is working so the air is supposed to be moving down that way of the barn i'm just going to pump some fog here going down there a bit but it's also getting sucked around this corner here so this west side of the barn is a heck of a lot better the air is actually moving down the wall here pretty good it's just that east side of the barn is pretty much sits still on that far wall so it was really interesting to see how that fog moved and you could really visually see it and I could get it on video and show you guys what tunnel ventilation looks like. And well, we noticed it's pretty stagnant on that wall. So pretty cool to see how the barn is actually being ventilated. So we got a issue with the Laley Juno again. So this thing's got a safety sensor on it and it'll stop as soon as it runs into anything this black ring around it, as soon as it gets pushed at all, it'll stop moving. And it ran into the wall here while it was trying to come up and park on its charging dock. I'm just gonna park it there. 
and hopefully it doesn't do this again in the near future but if it does we'll have to look at this thing uh, there is a gyro in there that's basically how this thing knows which way it's going uh, maybe that has to be calibrated but for now we're just gonna park it on the dock and if this keeps happening that's what we're gonna do so we got the Laylee Juno app here or the Laylee app manual yes we'll just back it off of this wall here So I believe this thing's got two drive wheels underneath it. And basically you turn one of those wheels on or off. If it's red, the right wheel is on, now it's off. So now if I press go, it's gonna turn like it's only running one wheel. And then I can also control forwards and backwards with the middle button. And then it'll still only run the one wheel. And then we'll go right wheel and forwards. That should go straight. And that's how you control this thing. It's pretty simple. The way you know it's not gonna run is if this little white light where this pause button is, if that's on, it's not gonna run. So I need to turn it on and then off again. And that turned the little light off there. Now we know it's gonna run on its next route. This cow number 23, we're gonna be switching her tags around. We ordered some new tags. These tags on her are perfectly good. The new ones just have an radio ID on there or a button we call it. And this is so that we can ID her in the milking parlor and get her milk weights and that kind of stuff. Uh, we just had these temporary tags in her because we just purchased her. So this is the ear tag gun. Right is where the button goes in. Put it in the same hole. This is the tag with the button, the responder in there, and that's what this circle on top is. That is going to be it for today's video guys if you enjoyed be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below check out the instagram at sass dutch kid and i hope to see you guys in the next video thanks for watching